Pretty, pretty awesome. You're pretty, you're, you know, your parents did pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash condemnation dot PDF. Condemnation. That's what we're going to talk about today because some of y'all are downtrodden. Meaning the enemy is holding things against you and you feel condemned. We're not supposed to, as believers, to walk around feeling condemned. And anybody that is making you feel condemned is not from God. Man, can I preach this? That's how you know who's with God and who's with the devil. If they condemn you, they can't be with Christ. Because in Christ, there is no condemnation. Oh, look at the hand claps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so if somebody is condemning you and making you feel you can't go forward or you just jive and have ruined everything, that's not God. And you be, amen, and you be turn that person's volume down. Amen. Any preacher that's preaching messages to make you feel condemned is not preaching under the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm. You know, there's a, there's a unique, I mean, there's a delicate, not unique, there's a delicate balance there with preaching against sin and preaching condemnation. We preach against sin because sin will condemn you. So we try to keep you free from sin so you won't feel condemnation yeah. but it's not God that's condemning you yeah. Jesus came so he so you wouldn't be condemned by him yeah. right. Right. Yes, amen Jesus came and look somebody said Jesus saved the day, saved the day. he saved the day and he saved you amen. what are you saved from you saved from condemnation yeah. your sin should have killed you and taken you out Jesus came to save you from your sins. What your sins cost, he paid. So look at somebody and say, why are you condemned? We got to get the weight of condemnation off. Now listen, that's why I said there's a delicate balance. We ain't telling everybody to go out and do whatever you want to do and don't feel bad about it. That's not the message I'm preaching. You, you got to be careful what you do because what you do will condemn you. Yeah. But it's not Jesus Christ that's condemning you. So the preach word should make you feel a way about your sins, but then you repent and change. Repent and according to the word, believe the gospel. But you don't repent and still feel condemned. If you feel condemned, then what did Jesus do? Amen. Remember last week I was talking about tickets. Getting tickets and going to jail. Remember I was talking about that? I think I went twice on that. But man, when you know you riding around with a warrant or you riding dirty with something expired on your car or a tail light out or you know, something that the cops might stop. Your heart is beating fast and you got a little anxiety happening. You can't ride free. The music you listen to don't even sound the same. Worship music sound like sad music. <laughs> Upbeat music, the beat ain't right. Just, I don't feel good in this condition. You just turn the music off. I don't want to hear nothing. Yeah. Because I need to be able to hear sirens or whatever. <laughs> so I'm just out of, I'm just, I, <laughs> I ain't, it, things ain't right. So I don't feel right. But then you go pay that ticket. You pay it off. Yeah. Man, don't you feel good? Yeah. Don't you feel good when you pay that ticket out? When they tell your brother the warrant is, 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 is over. You, you, you're not under the warrant anymore. <laughs> You'll be ready to just dance and shout in the police station. Where you go pay them? At the, the county. You down there getting excited. Amen. Or when you got a bill looming over you. Anybody had a bill? Anybody ever had a bill loom? Just loom. And you're like, what's that? Is the bill. 
build a cloud and rain right over you. It's looming, but then you get the money to pay it. It changes a little something, don't it? Oh, then you get a little extra. Oh, I can go to Papa Do's now. And it's a feeling when something is paid, when something is taken care of, you feel better, right? Well, that's how we're supposed to be in Christ. It's been paid and it's been taken care of. So why are you letting it loom over you? Walking around feeling like you got a warrant and it's been paid. Amen. Some of y'all, it got even deeper than that. Felonies and stuff. And God took care of it. You here, you're free. You're able to come to church and thank God. Some of y'all narrowly escaped prison. Amen. See, the church ought to be the place where you can throw your hands up and you don't care who saw it. Amen. I narrowly escaped prison. Amen. We don't come in. Well, let me, let me, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But this is the church. Amen. We don't stir each other down because of sins that we, that they used to commit. Who you used to be. This is church. This is where we're supposed to come and get free from stuff. So we got to keep free in the atmosphere. And not condemnation. Letting go of the past and people's opinions, opinions, is hard to do. That's the first thing you must learn to do is get rid of or get over and let go of people's opinions. Because the devil can only work if he gets in people. So he gets in people to make you feel a way about their opinions of you. And he wants them to keep announcing their opinion to you so that your own opinion of you changes. Once they plant the seed, they'll leave you alone. I've done my job. I needed you to doubt yourself and feel bad. Then they're out your life, but they deposited that in your life. Letting go of the past and people's opinions is hard to do. Many of us are tormented because the devil condemns us and we believe him. Why? Look at somebody and say, why you believe the devil? I'm not believing nothing the devil says. Even when he tells the truth, I don't believe it. Bible says when he tells the truth, it's, going, it's leading to a lie. I don't want to hear his truth. Devil can't preach nothing to me. I'm not eating the meat and spitting out the bone. I ain't eating none of it. If it's from the devil... Why would I listen to the devil who's the enemy of my soul? No, it's uh, when I'm getting ready to do, like I'm getting ready to do this rewind. It's truth on hip hop and stuff, stuff like that. Certain things, I, certain people I can't listen to. Certain people I don't go around. Certain things I don't do because I know they're too weak to fight the devil off. If I'm getting ready to do this level of spiritual warfare, y'all don't know the level of spiritual warfare that the truth behind hip hop is, but it's, it's big. And I'm getting ready to do that level, I can't be around folks that's weak and the devil keeps slipping through them. Not during that period. I'll talk to you later. But if I know you can't handle the devil. Yeah then I don't need to be around him and you need to do the same thing. When you're doing spiritual warfare, really seeking God for certain things, you don't need to be listening to everybody. You don't need everybody over your house. You don't need to be on the phone with them and texting. Sometimes you got to cut folks off. This person is spiritually weak and the devil keeps using them. So I need to back away from them for a minute. This person listened to the devil too much. Amen. Somebody don't like that kind of gospel, boy. That's that. Yeah, you're going to have to do it if you want to go further. You're only going as far as your friends.
The people you surround yourself with, that's your barometer. Yeah. That, that's your measure. Yeah. You're not going any further. You on the phone with stupid people, you're going to be stupid. you stupid for being on the phone. And it's okay. God understands. I mean, you ain't got to be friends with everybody because you're saved. Oh, I'm a believer. And, you know, I got to accept everybody. But Jesus didn't. The Bible said 300 folks walked away from him. And he didn't run after not one of them. Did Jesus take off running? Kick his sandals off and take off running? No, he didn't run after none of them. He let them go. Yeah, he didn't run after Judas. He didn't run after Judas. You didn't think he knew where Judas was going? He knew exactly where Judas was going. And he let him go. Go hang yourself, bro. That's the best for you right now. Sometimes you got to let folks hang themselves. You don't hang them. Jesus didn't toss a rope at him. Why you running? Here you go. <laughs> you might need this when you reach your destination. <laughs> no! Sometimes you just got to let folks hang themselves. Amen. Revelations 12 and 10. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Somebody don't like this kind of stuff, but that's okay. Revelations 10, 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation, strength, Kingdom of our God, power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Now, one thing that the accuser of the brethren, who is Satan, does, he accuses day and night. Why are you listening to somebody whose only job is accusations? That's who you listen to? The devil accusing? I'm not believing anything he says because... He's got a job. And his job is accusations and accusing. So when he don't have nothing to say, he got to make up stuff to keep his job going. Why would I listen to that? That's not a trusted source. If that's all you do all day, eventually you're going to be lying on somebody. Just to keep talking. Am I telling the truth, Elder? If that's your only job, if that's all you're doing. Because if you're doing it day and night, you ain't got time to do nothing else. So I know you got to be lying at some point. Yeah. Look at somebody say, don't listen to the devil. His words will condemn you. Make you feel not good enough. Make you feel you can't overcome. The Bible said we will, be, we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of God. Whose testimony? Not what the devil is saying. The words of our testimony. So when the devil go to testifying of who you used to be and who you think you are, you start testifying of who you are and then you will overcome. Jesus never uses condemnation to draw us or punish us. He never uses condemnation to draw us or punish us. He doesn't change the way he feels about us because of our past sins and present struggles. The thing we have to realize is God is not like us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody, you know, I, inbox me about something and they ask me a question and I, you know, I don't get to get to all the inboxes. There's hundreds of them. So I didn't get to it or something like that. Then they inbox me back a few weeks later. Did I do something? I'm like, what? Did I do something to offend you? And that's why you didn't get, get back with me. And the problem with that is, is that's very annoying to think that I'm just but the problem with that is 
Men are like that in your life, but all men aren't like that. So when we're hurt, traumatized or whatever, we start putting that stigma on everybody. Thinking that people are like what happened to us. Everybody's like that. We begin to see that in people. And we miss opportunities of really having covenant relationships with people because of what somebody did previously. And we're misreading situations. He was reading that situation based on that happening before. Had to. And bro, I didn't think about when I did. I, I no, I didn't think about you like that. You see what I'm saying? But I did. The Lord told me to tell him, say, I'm not like whoever, whatever, whatever, and it ended up in a conversation about the church hurt they had experienced. And that's what it was. Church hurt. You experienced it, you were hurt by somebody's church, and you thought I was like that as well. When it's, it's inbox, it's text, it's, it's digital, it's, it's not real. Jesus never uses it. He doesn't change the way he feels about us because of past sins, present struggles. John 3 and 17. For God sent not his son into the world to what? Did that just say everything? He said he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved is the opposite of condemned. Condemned is eternal punishment. Saved is eternal life. They're the opposite of each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, then when we feel condemned, it's not him. Easy. It can't be him because he did not send his son into the world Easy. to condemn the world. Yeah. Some folks join certain beliefs and religions and doctrines just to condemn people. Yeah. Because they've been condemned. They enjoy seeing people suffer. Oh, I'm going to speak something to some husbands and wives in here. When your husband or your wife hurts you, don't punish them. Don't make it last longer. Oh, they going to feel this way. No, that's condemning. You're going to condemn the person you're one with, you're condemning yourself. Hey, I'm in the house. I don't care. This ain't lack of sleep or grandbaby. This is the truth of the word. This is what you got to do. I don't care how mad you are, don't take it out on them. You know why? Because you got to live with that person. And I'm not saying you just put up with anything. But have real conversations. Don't be saying stuff and or, or shutting down and not talking for two months. Letting it fester and build up. Man, I'm, I'm, let me walk over here and preach this. Because somebody over here needs to hear it. I feel it in my elbow. Yeah, young marriages, old marriages, whoever it is, all y'all back there. Yeah, don't do that. Don't put nobody through hoops and junk to make them feel worse. Oh, that's okay. Yo, who are you to make somebody feel bad and punish? We don't, we don't operate like that as a ministry either. Yeah, if you have an issue or something, man, we will address it right away. We don't call you and tell you, oh, don't, well, give us a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, you just seek the Lord, brother. So what you did was pretty bad. So we'll get back with you in a couple of weeks. They doing that. That's demonic. They in pain. They tormented that whole time. <laughs> we grew up. <laughs> they did us. Did they do us like that? They did us like that. Oh, purpose. Like, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'll talk to you next month. <laughs> next month? What am I supposed to do in the meantime? Fast and pray. <laughs> Just torture you. 
So, brother, I'm sorry. Well, the first thing you have to do is rip. You're saying you're sorry to me, but this is a church, so you're going to have to get up and repent to the whole church. The whole church! The whole church in the microphone. And you got to tell exactly what you did. Then you get up there and be trying to, you know, you get spiritual and try to talk around it. And, yo! <laughs> no, pray for me. No, no, nope, no. Nope. Tell them what they're praying for. Uh, y'all, it, you know, the, the, the dice, the, the, the shack, the dice and the shack, and a little bit of drinking. Uh, tell them everything. Why the pastor got, why do you have a mic too? Oh. <laughs> Did they do us like that elder? These, y'all so blessed. Y'all have no idea. Man, make you get up and. Tell what you did and everybody else ain't telling what they did. That's why we don't do that. We ain't, ain't no public confession or we'll be pass, like, passing the mic like I ain't turn out. <laughs> With that long cord. <laughs> mic gotta go to everybody. All the elders. All the deacons. We start with the leaders. Work our way through the lay members. And everybody tell what they did this week that God didn't like. I'm sorry. We have to allow God to deal with people. We can't take the place of God in his church. It's not mine to condemn you as a pastor. That's not my job to make you feel worse than you already feel. It's my job to find out why you keep putting yourself in that position and help you through it. That's my job, to identify what's wrong with you, dude. Many of y'all have heard that, heard me ask that with the same flicker in my voice. Dude, what's wrong with you? And let's try to see how we can keep this from happening again. I'm not, it's not mine to embarrass you. Not sitting a man down in front of his wife and demeaning him in front of her. Yeah, and they all, oh, well, not all, but oh, a lot of them. That's the email I get. Pastor, can you sit down with us? Can you sit down with us? Can you sit? No. Why would I sit down with two grown people? We ain't in the sandbox. Okay, you hold his hand. You hold her hand. Now look into her eyes. And let me get my love language book. Okay, so your, your love language is food. And your love language is... We all got the same love language. Everybody got the same love language. Your, your, listen, your love language got corrupted with your previous relationships. So what you need to do is zero back to who you were before you got involved with all them folks and you won't have to be speaking no different love languages. Got the little manual in it, just looking through all oh, this see the love language. You ain't gotta do that. Do you love her in English? Then treat her like it. Do you love him? Then treat him like it. Get along, forgive each other, and shut up. How about that? That's my counseling. I just counseled everybody. That's a counseling session. That's all you're going to get. Why, why, why am I sitting too broke? Pastor, things are just so bad. Like, we can't even have conversations. Well, I'm sorry. Who, which one of y'all is praying? Which, which one of y'all is praying? I mean, I've been praying, but ain't nothing seemed to happen. Did you stop praying? I mean, I've been praying for a while. Well, it must not have been long enough. Pray some more. I mean, what they really want to say is, prayer don't work, okay? Pastor, prayer don't work. That's what they want to say. They want to preach a whole sermon to me. Pastor, let me be honest with you. All this old prayer and praying for stuff and, 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 and denying yourself and finding God, I, none of it works. That's what they want to say. They can't say that because they'll feel like Beelzebub from the pit of the ninth hell. Because you know you're just in your feelings. Those are your emotions. The word works. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. 
What God said, I believe all of the Bible. I believe every bit of it. I believe if I stay before God, he will answer my prayer. I believe if I do what he wants me to do, he will answer my prayer. I believe if I love him like I'm supposed to, he will answer my prayer. You don't believe that? Leave the church, go home, and be mad. We don't condemn folks, though. Ain't making nobody feel bad. It's not what we do. He did not come to condemn means just that. Our past sins are not an issue anymore, and we cannot allow the enemy to keep us feeling bad because of our sordid history. Amen. We don't, we, look, look, we don't keep tabs on the bad of the people that we love. I ain't sitting in my house and every time my wife do something I don't like, I just make a little note. Mm. And then I wait till I'm real upset and blow up and I got this long list of stuff and I'm going back two, three years bringing up junk. That's condemnation. That's from hell. That's not God. You better be arguing about what just happened. You didn't say nothing then. Shut up! Hey Amen. Me and the elders, we would just roll our eyes at you and get up and leave if you come meet with us and tell us about some stuff that you didn't like 10 years ago. Brother, we gonna roll our eyes like women in unison. <laughs> No, we not. No, we ain't gonna do it. We gonna feel like doing it. Brother, get out my face. Yeah, see, I've been, I've, been, I've been keeping up with things that you once, when you preach, you said, where was that? I mean, you had hair, so that had to be back in. Boy, if you don't get out my... <laughs> Man, I'll be wanting to kick butt. I want to kick your butt. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing that? You're a grown man. Keeping stuff in your heart. You don't have the courage to address it at the time. Shut up and put on a dress because that's how you behave it. Leave the church and now you're talking. You was deaf mute in here. I ain't hear eight words from you. You was here 10 years. Now you are just a prophet. Brother, I ain't never even heard you talk. I know you sounded like that. You had a voice box. You know, I got to make room, y'all. It's getting crowded. But he did not. Condemn us means just that. Our past sins are not an issue anymore. So we can't allow the enemy to keep whispering them back and telling us about our sordid history. We know what we did and we see, we see the remnants of some of us, you know, failed marriages and kids out of well, whatever. We see it all day. We know. We don't need the devil reminding us. We're on the path of recovery now. We're making things better. We're fixing things, man. Why will I keep listening to the devil? <laughs> Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no... How much condemnation? No. How much is there? No. no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. No, look at somebody and say, no condemnation. Man, I'm preaching in here. I'm about to lose my voice, so let me hurry up. No, oh, this is somebody in the spirit. This is how you leave the house. Because you're trying to prove to everybody that you saved now. They picked you up in the alley with boots and overcoat three times. And now, the next time, this is how you look. Because I got to show everybody that <laughs> I'm not the same. <laughs> Brother, you look like something that belonged on a cake or something. Why do you look like that? How long does it take to put that on? 
How hot is it? What kind of climate do you have to be in? What's that on your head? That's three layers of hat. Three layers of hat. Two collars, a brooch, and a whole bunch of... <laughs> that looked like the cover of Big Mama's couch. You wearing that. What is that? Big Mama that back. <laughs> when we can, <laughs> but this is what your past will do. If you let the devil keep bringing your past up and condemning you, then it's gonna flip a switch in you. Yeah, now you gotta prove because you think. See, when the devil is talking to you, you think everybody's saying that. Yeah, devil just made you think everybody's looking at you like that. And so now, you have to go to the fabric store and spend thousands of dollars. That's thousands of dollars worth of fabric. Mimi could make choir robes for the Georgia Mass Choir with what you got on. But when we consider our past, we attempt. See, I say attempt because you can't being dumb but we attempt to protect our reputation and defend ourselves so that's what the devil wants he wants to accuse you so you'll defend yourself see the devil is behind you he's behind you right but he wants you to turn around and address him if you turn around and address him you can't go forward because you're looking back so you following the spirit. Aren't we following the spirit? Yes. So we're following the spirit. Devil ain't following the spirit. When does the devil start following the spirit? He can't follow the spirit. So he has to be behind us. So if we're following the spirit. He has to be behind us. But he keep, hey, 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 man. Hey, hey, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around and defend yourself. Every time. And he wasn't even accusing Jesus because there was nothing to accuse Jesus of. So he was trying to trick Jesus with the word. He'd say something to Jesus. Jesus said, get where? Behind. Get where? Behind. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> so you say you're the son of God. Do this, do that, do this. Prove you're the son of God. Why would I prove anything to a demon behind me? Get behind me. There's nothing to prove behind me. Behind me has already happened. Why? 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 Why am I... Boy... Let me preach over here. Man, we wouldn't have a Bible if we had to take in account everything folks did in their past. There would be no Bible. There are humans that wrote that under the influence of God. So don't you let the devil tap you on your shoulder. You constantly turn around defending yourself. You got more and more layers on to show the devil that you really are saved. That don't show the devil you saved. We become an attorney of self. Always trying to reshape our image and convince our jurors, who are enemies, of our new character. Yeah, that's why we don't have no open mic church. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because that's what testimony service becomes. It starts off okay. Thank you, love being here. Thank you, love my life. Thank you, love, Thank you, love waking me up this morning. Close my right mind. Ask y'all to pray for me as I go on to see what the end's going to be. Okay, that's great. But then the next person who thinks that there are whispers questioning how they have behaved, they got to get up and prove to the congregation that they are greater than the people's opinions. Y'all, I was in prayer the other night. Open my eyes, I was in the air. I was in the air. I said, God, please bring me down. Bring me down, Lord, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm not skilled in the art of levitation. Bring me down, God. Oh, yeah, ba, 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 sha, ta. Bring me down. Bring me down, Lord, on earth with the regular people because I can't. Turn. The regular people. <clears throat> That's what it becomes. This is you in the spirit. Yeah. Because you're trying to prove, especially to your family. 
You know the women whose husbands wasn't saved and wouldn't come to church? Man, in church, they were some wonder-working wonders. Oh, my goodness. I've never seen power on display like that before ever. It was all talk, but, man, it was some big talk. But they have to do that because their own husband won't come to church. Can I preach in here? Oh, yeah, they got all the license. Downloaded them off of phonydiploma.com. You got a doctor's license of divinity. License of... <laughs> license of foolery. That's what you need. License off the cereal box. Yeah. Just out of control. And pastors let that junk go on. Proverbs 27 and, 7, and 2. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. Amen. I don't like this message, Stacy. So I'm just going to sit right here. Yeah, let somebody else say it. Why are you talking about yourself? Trying to show off in front of church folks. Take advantage of us in here because everybody out there know you crazy. Yeah, try to gather a group. Can't nobody even speak to you. How you doing, sister? Mm. Mm. I see something. When you was walking, I saw. You pushed that door open kind of hard. And God says your life has been hard. And doors have been closed on you. But just like you pushed that door open, release ta 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 I had one lady speaking to me one time and she said, oh, Pastor C, God has done great things for you, but there's another level that God wants to take you to. And the reason you can't reach it is because you're not open to what God wants to do through women. I said, well, I guess I'll never reach it. Because not only am I close to some of this women stuff, but I'm 100% close to everything you said right now. You can't speak into me. I cast it down. It dies right now. Every word out of your mouth. And she was sitting there like. Man, you can't accept everybody's word over your life. And let me tell you something about these words over your life. They better bear witness with the spirit that's in you. See, God gave you the Holy Spirit. He said no man has to teach you. That means that whatever they're saying has to bear witness to what's already in you. If it doesn't bear witness, tell them to shut up. You won't catch on fire. They might. Tell them to shut up. Don't talk to me like that, brother. I don't need to hear your word. I don't want to hear that. I don't want you speaking into me. Oh, my God. You just a demon. You're just, I'm a demon because I don't want to hear what you got to say? If it's prophecy, then it's not contingent upon you telling me. It's supposed to happen anyway. So why are you concerned about how I feel about you if it's God's prophecy? Shut up, witch! It's always a witch. Can I keep preaching in here? Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. A stranger and not thine own lips. Keep your lips shut about you. I want to hear how spiritual you are. You can't prove it. Now, I ain't trying to be super spiritual. Then don't say it. That's the sign right there. When you let out that preface, just hush then. I ain't trying to get too deep. Don't. This leads us down a path, path of using God as evidence of our change and just being religious instead of having an intimate relationship with him. Intimate relationship. 
So you don't have a relationship with God. You just got a relationship with his stuff and his people. Yeah. That's right. Second Timothy 3 and 5 says, having a form of what? Godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such do what? Turn away. Turn away. Mm. We begin to read the Bible, pray, and speak in old King James English to prove ourselves to others because we fear their thoughts and opinions of us. I never understood that when folks prophesied. Prophecy's real, but man, why are you prophesying old English words? Brother, you ain't old English. You ain't King James. Mm. God hath said that thou art his son. And God. Bruh. You wasn't born in Luftenberg. trying to prove hey don't be flexing don't be trying to flex this is church ain't nobody in here a star but Christ amen and compared to him we all trash why are you in here trying to floss in God's house and this is his house Like you visiting, coming over my house, and you just putting your feet on everything and just chilling out, just, and just sitting like, bro, you ain't paying no bills. Ask me before you do that. That's my house. You can't floss in my house. You can't be more special than me in my house. You ain't gonna come in my house and say nothing more special than what my wife was saying. You can't be more special than Jonathan Landon or Spyro in my house. Because that's my house. So when you come to God's house, you can't be more special than him. We begin to read the Bible and pray, oh, King James. But this is not true love. This is really living in fear. You living in fear of people's opinions. You have altered your whole existence to look deep because of condemnation of your past. It's always the folks with the worst, worst past that's trying to look super duper spiritual. First John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because the fear hath what? You're tormented when you have to go around trying to be more than you are to people. That's torment. You can't be yourself. You're afraid folks won't like you. Or folks think you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And there's no hope for you. That's torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Can I keep preaching? I feel like this is blessing somebody. Fearing people's opinions of us causes us to live a lie and hide our true selves. We pretend we are good when we are not. And this creates doorways for the enemy to enter in. You're at a church like this where we will deal with any problem you have with the word of God. But you're hiding and won't reveal yourself so you can't get help. You, you can't get help if you're hiding yourself. So you're hiding yourself. You can't get help. And then the devil says, oh, you're hiding yourself? I'm going to give you some more stuff to hide. Since we're in the hiding business. Since you're in the hiding game, let me add some sins that you got to hide now. It creates doorways for the enemy. James said, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. So don't just confess your faults, but pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I thought you said we weren't supposed to get the microphone. I ain't talking about the microphone. Don't confess your faults in the microphone. Why you need a mic? Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man counts for a 
lot. Once the devil has an entryway, he brings condemnation so that the very opinions of others seem to be true. Condemnation makes negative opinions of you true. That's what it is. You're condemned because you're believing what folks are saying. When we, uh, we then struggle to love others, be pleased with ourselves, and feel God is pleased with us. That's a terrible struggle to think God don't like you. That's where it goes. That's what the devil's ultimate goal is, to make you think God feels about you the way he feels about him. Then you pray less. You read the Bible less. Then you start thinking every bad thing that happens to you is God. Oh, this must be God. He has stricken me. <laughs> stricken. Man, if God judged your sin, the wages of sin is death. If you are alive, God has not judged your sin. Because sin pays, is paid with death. The death happened for your sins because Jesus died for your sins. So you can live. Why would God mess his own program up by not allowing what Jesus did to work on you? Why would he deprive anybody of his son's blood when his son's blood was for everybody? devil will make you think you worse than a atheist and you have a desire to read the word a desire to pray here it is you feel bad about what you did and that's all God needs look at somebody and say stop listening to the devil man God Jesus came to save not condemn Colossians 3 and 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds. Man, this is a good word. When we are condemned, we cannot love. It's impossible to truly love when we are hiding our true selves and protecting our true selves from the opinions of others. That's not love. Some of y'all married, been married for years, and not in love. Yeah. You're not in love because you haven't revealed your true self to your spouse. <laughs> Somebody told you, condemned you, and now you're afraid that your own husband or wife will condemn you. So you won't show them yourself for fear that they won't like you. You're in a relationship and you're putting on a facade? then you don't understand love. And if you're doing that in your relationship, you're definitely doing it with God. <laughs> Can I keep preaching? 1 John 3 and 21, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then, we, then have we confidence toward God. If your heart isn't condemning you, you can have confidence toward God. But if your heart is condemning you, you don't have confidence toward God. Amen. Summary! <laughs> Problem in many churches today is the lack of true transparency and honesty towards each other. Church has become a place in many cases where we must all look the part, act the part, and shun those that do not. Not this church. Amen. Amen. We're not doing that. Instead of truly loving one another, we judge each other first to see if they are worthy of love. What? We throw people away when they fail or they are overtaken in a fault. We condemn them into repentance instead of rescuing them. 
These are actions that people commit when they have been condemned themselves. Only a person that was disappointed, severely wounded, or deeply hurt will treat others this way. The devil has transferred his condemnation into them, and they are transferring it to others. Y'all know the devil is condemned. Yes. Like, the, the gavel on the front of this has already been banged on him. Yes, it's a wrap. He's done. Yes, He's done. Yeah. yeah, so he wants to transfer that into you so you'll feel like you're done. There's no hope. No hope for you. Had somebody tell me that the other day, I just feel like there's no hope for me. It's like, brother, you 31. That's impossible for there to be no hope in you 31. I am 31. Brother, quit listening to the devil, man. What the devil really wants is to have the power. He don't have no power. He don't have power over death and life. That's why he make you say it. Because if you say it, then it works on you. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Not the devil's tongue. Oh, I'm preaching the word today. But only a person that was disappointed, severely wounded, or deeply hurt would treat others this way. The devil has transferred his condemnation into them and they are transferring it to others. Then the church altar becomes the place of shame-faced people that must face public ridicule and scrutiny if they want special prayer or repentance. Aren't y'all glad y'all not in a church like that? Well, it used to be they, they get an altar call, hey, anyone come up? Pastor just preached to me. Anyone want to come up and folk just sit there? Because they don't want to be scrutinized. Because you got nothing but condemners in there. And accusers in there. And folk that talk everybody's business. So the young folk don't even come to the altar because they don't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm, you heard, Lil Jesse came to the altar. It's about time. They voice always deep like that. Women, they voice always that old raspy. Oh, it's about time, Lil Jesse. Mm -hmm. I always sound like Marge Simpson sisters. It's time, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's time, about time. He came up. He came up. At least he came up. Where's your husband? Where's your husband, witch? He ain't never came. He ain't came to the church. He ain't come to the picnic. We're not going to do that in this church. That's not what we do. We're not blocking God's access to people. Somebody want to come to the altar, you don't know why they came. They might have came for you and your crazy tail and how you acted when they tried to shake your hand. They might be up here interceding for the devil in you. None of this is God's way. The church is supposed to be a fellowship of believers that can bear each other's infirmities. We are supposed to love people to Christ, not condemn them to Christ. Your terrible past should not be why you pray and fast and read the Bible. God don't want that kind of relationship with you. That's like you just, I'm going to marry him because he got money. Do you love him? Well, I learned to. He get my money. I'm going to be with her for lack of other options. Oh, dude. Nobody wants that kind of relationship. You settle it. Well, I guess I'll go. I want to give you my number. You might as well say, since there's nobody better. Here you go. Okay. Man, and if she took it, it's worse. You're going to be so sick of her. Yeah, we're supposed to love her. God, God don't want that kind of relationship. Terrible past because of all you've been through. Now that's why you read and fast. And you know, people, you know, they do us like that all the time. 
just, you know, they come here and they want to be super deep because they've had just a terrible past. You know, they've shot people, been shot at, shot somebody on the way to church, smell like gun smoke. Brother, you smell like gunpowder. Where have you been and why are your fingernails black? But they come in here and yes. So how you doing, brother? Oh, you know, highly favored or whatever. You think I can talk to you later? Okay, okay, give them the phone number. They call you. So, how you doing, brother? Yeah, yeah, well, I just came out of this warfare, you know, with this, with, with this demon. I was fighting with him for about two hours, but I knew I had to talk to you, so I, you know, just called on the name of Jesus and called on the power of the Most High. He came in and slayed the demon, and so now I'm able to talk to you. So, how are you doing? That sound like you had on some metaverse glasses, brother. What was you doing? What game was you playing? Don't they do that, Jay Bryant? They do you like that all the time. They just gotta always try to act spiritual with Jay Bryant. How you doing, brother? Man, I just want to form a relationship with you, try to help you do something. Well, you know, I've been praying for you. That God would do that in your life, too. I call Jay, how things go with him? I can always tell, Pastor, man. Yeah. I'm in the pages of the Bible. I'm, I'll, I'll call you back when I get out of the book. Right now, I'm in the book. Oh, you reading? No, I'm in the book. You didn't hear me. I'm in the book. Do a background check on them. <laughs> Say the only book you've been in, you've been booked. You in the book now, but you've been booked. You you've been booked. <laughs> Whole lot of booking going on. You're in the book and book. A terrible past should not be why you pray, fast, or read the Bible. God don't want that. You should do these things to know God and love him so much that you desire to be close to him. Talking to him should be an all day thing and not only a kneel down formality. Oh, see, God convicted me about that because I talk to the Lord all day. You know, I just, I just say stuff and just talk, whatever, whatever. But then sometimes I get on my knees and I was feeling in my heart that sometimes the knee thing was more effective. Yeah. And God let me know, I just want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just want to talk. Yeah. Can you run it by me first? Yeah. Whether you're driving in your car, on your knees, whatever. You might can't get up. You can't pour a call to get on your knees yeah. on, in the street. Then you need to pray for two things, whatever he's going to ask him for. <laughs> for that 18-wheeler not to hit you. Oh God, now, now, protect me on the side. Let me finish this. It's time to stop. <laughs> yeah, so you should do these things to know God. Love him so much that you desire to be close to him. Talking to him should be an all-day thing and not only a kneel down formality. Formality. You should desire to tell him all of your hurt, pain, issues, etc. You should desire to lift your hands, bless him, and sing praises to him. That's a relationship if you love him. Amen. Back to the husbands and wives. Yeah, you should say good things about each other. Publicly. In front of your children. Walk up to your wife and tell her how much you love her and thank her for putting up with your crazy self. Did you know you was crazy? Ask me. Ask me. Be thankful that she does that. And you be thankful, wife, that you got a man. Can you be thankful you got a man? There's so many women that don't have a man. You got a real man too. If he in here, we have real men in here. 
we, we, we don't, we don't, we don't have a high count of the, you know, the sugary population. There's just not a lot of sugar in ABC. It's just not a lot of sugar. It's ABC, but it ain't the alphabet cereal. Ain't a lot of sugar in here. We don't do that. We don't do that. And it's not like I just, we, we close the door on them coming in here. It's just they ain't coming in, they're going to have to man up. Amen, because we're not catering to that. Brother, we're not going to let you carry your wife's purse around the church like this. Brother, you walking like the Pink Panther. We're not going to let you do that. Little music playing. <laughs> Somebody take this mic. Oh, we gotta go. Okay. <laughs> I was talking to my mama yesterday. <laughs> she said, she said uh, you, you back home? I said, oh no. I said, the party is tonight. She said, tonight on a Saturday? I said, yeah, it's tonight. She said, y'all gonna drive back tonight? I said, yeah. She said, oh Lord. <laughs> She said, tomorrow you're going to be crazy as a road lizard. <laughs> oh, let me finish this. <laughs> but church has become a place where we must... Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you, baby. Talking to him all day. Okay, let me get out. When you mature, no. Where am I? Where am I? True love. Okay, where is that? Oh. True love for God. <laughs> you two gonna be like, man, what in the world happened to Pastor Lewis? But true love for God makes you speak the deep things to him and treat him right. You know what the deep things are? Secrets of your heart. You know what? It's better to speak that to the Lord than the people. You feeling a way about somebody? You got something deep you want to tell them, brother, you know. Oh, I just can't stand you. You didn't tell that to the Lord. Lord, I just can't stand them. And God said, well, there was a time when I couldn't stand you. But I forgave you, cleaned you up. You good now. So love your brother and sister. Those are the deep things. God will keep you out of fights. He'll keep you out of confrontations. You won't say senseless things if you speak deep things to the Lord. True love makes you speak the deep things. When you mature to, the, to this level of relationship with him, you will fall less. Feel bad when others fail. See, that's deep. When you feel bad when others fail, you feel bad instead of glad. If you feel glad when others fail, you are Satan. Because he feels good when others fail. When you mature to this level of relationship, you fall less, you feel bad when others fail, you hurt when he hurts, God hurts, and you talk to him without ceasing. Christ wants to relate to you, not condemn you. You were created for God's good pleasure and he finds pleasure in your daily life. Amen. I know so many couples that they pray together, fast together, oh, they got the spiritual side and no natural love. And you don't even know why God created the relationship. He didn't create the relationship so y'all could come together and recall fire from heaven. <laughs> he created the relationship so he could find good pleasure in y'all loving each other. Y'all were made in his image and his likeness. It pleases him to watch y'all coexist and love each other. And pass a legacy on to the next generation. That's what you're doing it for. I don't need the wonder twins and oh, y'all got the rings. Yes, unite, baby. Pa, we go tatties. <laughs> Ain't no relationship. That's not a relationship. Cain 
scream, hug, and kiss. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, maybe I felt a little something. It was a little too much. What? What's wrong with y'all? I know I'm in the house today. Yeah. Bible tell you don't even be fasting and praying without each other's permission. Don't be fasting and going on the sabbaticals. Your husband trying to touch you. Oh, no, not this month. Let's seek the Lord, but I'm seeking the Lord. Christ wants to relate to you, not condemn you. You were created for God's good pleasure, and he finds pleasure in your daily life. Stop worrying about what people think and focus on how you really feel about him. Amen? Do you love him? Then show it. Mark 12 and 30, and I'm wrapping this up for real. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. So you need to love the Lord like this. Let go of people's opinions. Let go of what folks think. Let go of what they said. And especially let go of what you did. It's over now. Jesus paid for that. He wants a relationship and he don't want you allowing the devil to come between you and him. Amen. If you need prayer for that, come on up right now. Just get condemnation off you, off your life. We're going to just believe God is going to knock it right off your life. That feeling bad, whatever it is about yourself, about what you did, about whatever, what people said, however, just whatever it is. No condemnation. No condemnation. Sometimes parents say the wrong thing and they're trying to help you, but they shouldn't have said that. Sometimes they took it overboard. They were just trying to make you picked the right guy or girl and they went too far condemned you you felt condemned you felt less than and when you walk around like that you are man your target for the enemy but God wants you to shed condemnation today don't feel bad don't feel bad anymore don't feel bad feel good feel good about what God has done Look around you at what he's done. He's answered your prayers. The devil's making you see something that don't exist. God has answered your prayers. He's been there for you. Man, he's done so much for you. Don't let the devil make you forget. Don't turn around and address him. Don't turn around and defend yourself. You don't have to turn around at all. Keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus everyone bow your heads Father God we thank you Lord for this message on condemnation God we thank you that you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world but you sent him so that we could all be saved salvation is the opposite of condemnation so God either we're saved or we're condemned but because, Father God, you sent your son, you said there is therefore now no condemnation to those <clears throat> that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's us today, God. Though we may have walked after the flesh in the past, we will walk after the spirit. We will get condemnation out of our lives and we won't let the devil put it back in our lives. So right now, God, take the condemnation release us from the torment release us from the torture of it everyone lift your hands father god pull that out of us pull it out of our hearts out of our minds what we keep thinking about the past we keep feeling less than we keep falling into the snares of the enemy falling into his traps father god we keep letting ourselves down help us father god in this area so we will not be condemned but god we will walk in newness of life we believe you've forgiven us. 
We believe you have forgiven us. We believe you died for us. We believe you have saved us. We believe, God, that you have chosen us to walk with us. So why are we condemned? We won't be condemned, God. Remove condemnation right now off your people everywhere. And Father God, those of us that were condemned, that causes us to condemn others, remove that from our lives, God. We're quick to condemn. We're quick, Father God, to jump on the side of the negative. We're quick to jump on the enemy side. We're quick to jump on the, the defense. We're quick to jump on someone's mistakes and errors and failures. Father, help us, Father God, to see ourselves and what you did for us in every situation so that we will not be condemned by condemning others in Jesus name we pray and help us God not to be too hard on people help us to not be too judgmental even on our kids on our wives our husbands on our relationship help us father God to not give up quickly on people help us God to come to you so we'll know how to handle those situations in Jesus name we pray amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm not condemned. There is no condemnation in me. But I am free from condemnation. I've been saved and bought with a price. No condemnation. No condemnation. Hallelujah. You may go to your seats. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder.